Woohoo! Welcome back. Tonight we're going to be talking about the algebra of matrices. And this is a nice break if you've been working through a lot of work with systems of equations and matrices to solve the systems of equations. This is an opportunity to look at matrices outside of that setting and address them as if they were just numbers, a bigger new kind of number that we're going to do algebra with instead. And so we're going to go ahead and build up a system for these matrices. The first step is going to figure out when are two matrices equal? What, what does a matrix mean and when is it equal to another matrix? And we're not actually going to figure this out, although Neo is here to help us out. And um, we're going to study what other people have pulled together that makes sense of how to look at, at matrices as numbers. So equal matrices have the same dimensions. Kind of makes sense. They have to be the same size. That makes sense. And then they have to have corresponding entries which are equal. So in other words, if I have here over here, this is a two by two matrix, right? It's two rows, two columns. Remember that it's always row and then column. And over here, again, two rows, two columns. If I've got two matrices that are the same size, then each individual entry, like A, has to match its corresponding buddy over here, 5. So in other words, A has to equal 5, B has to equal 4, C has to equal negative 2, and D has to equal 3. So in some ways, it's very simple. And hopefully, once, once you looked at that, you're like, oh, that makes sense. If the numbers inside are the same and the size is the same, then we can consider the matrices to be the same. Or, well, not the same, but equal, I should say. Okay, next up, now that we've established what the numbers are and how, you know, how they behave, let's talk about how to perform operations. Now, this is going to be a new way of describing a matrix. Frequently, matrices are given capital letter names because they're big. They've got multiple numbers usually inside of them. And then to represent this matrix, we can do a little tiny matrix, and it says AIJ. And then capital B is BIJ, and these represent the entries inside. And they're going to be matrices of the same dimension, so they have to be the same size, and C can be any real number. Okay, so we're establishing what we're talking about. Let's go ahead and go through the three types of addition we're going to work with right now. The three types, sorry, the three types of addition, no, the three types of operations. There we go. Addition. The sum, A plus B, is the M by N matrix obtained by adding corresponding entries. So remember when we said the corresponding entries had to be equal? If we're going to add, we'll add entry by entry that way. Subtraction, same thing. We're going to subtract each corresponding number. We'll do an example so you can see. And the multiplication, we're going to break up into two different possibilities. The first one we're going to talk about is called a scalar product. Now, here's where we actually start distinguishing between, remember up here it said C was a real number? Scalar multi uh, multiplication means we're multiplying a matrix by a single number, not by another matrix. Multiplying matrices is going to be the next video because that actually takes a little bit of setup. But multiplying by just a single value C, a real number, you just multiply each entry. Okay, so let's take a look at what that means. So I've, I've put together a bunch of different 
pieces. We've got A, which is a one, two, three by two matrix. B, which is a one, two, three by two matrix. C is a one, two by one, two, three. So kind of the opposite size. And D is one, oops, sorry, one, two by three again. Okay. So let's see what we can do. So A will ask us, what is A plus B? And what we're supposed to do is carry out the operation or explain why it cannot be performed. So A, A plus B. So that's going to be two, negative three, zero, five, seven, one half, plus, one, zero, negative three, one, two, two. This is three by two. This is three by two. They are like terms in that way. Same dimension. So we can add them. And what we're going to do, and hopefully I give myself enough room, is we're going to add the corresponding entries. So we're going to add two plus one. Over here, we're going to add negative 3 plus 0. Down here, row 2, column 1, 0 plus negative 3. 5 plus 1. 7 plus 2. And 1 half plus 2. So we're going to get, let's see, 3, negative 3, negative 3, 6, nine, and then two and a half down here. So I'm going to write as five halves. You could write 2.5 if you prefer. Okay. So that's how you add. You add each entry that's in the same spot in the corresponding matrices. Okay. Next up, let's look at C minus D. Okay. So C is 7, negative 3, 0, 0, 1, 5. And I'm going to subtract 6, oh, 6, 0, negative 6, 8, 1, 9. Let's see. This is a 2 by 3 and a 2 by 3. They have the same dimension. Can't quite see that. So let me scooch that up a little bit. Same dimension. So we're good. And it's to subtract, I'm going to subtract each entry. So 7 minus 6, negative 3 minus 0, 0 minus a negative 6. Down here, 0 minus 8, 1 minus 1, and 5 minus 9. So in some ways, although you are learning new techniques, the math involved is actually pretty straightforward, right? Subtraction, addition, you know this stuff already. Negative 8, 0, negative 4. Did I get that all? 1, negative 3, positive 6, a minus, a minus 6, positive 6, right? We got the two minuses come together and make a plus. Uh, 0 minus 8 is negative 8, 1 minus 1 is 0, 5 minus 9 is negative 4. Woohoo! Okay, I'm gonna need another piece of paper. So let me grab another piece of paper for the rest of these. Okay, part C. I want to do C plus A. So that's seven minus three zero zero one five, and add it to two negative three zero five seven one half. Okay, so. This is going to pose a problem, even if you don't know the rule, because, okay, so 7 and 2 you might be able to add, and negative 3 and negative 3, okay, but then who are you going to add to 0? There's nobody over here. And when we get down to the, the third row in A, there's no third row in C. So even if you don't know the rule, you could look at these two and go, oh, there's no way to figure out how to add them. Now... It turns out this is a two by three. This is a three by two. You can't add. Did 
they have different dimensions, so you can't add. In order to add or subtract two matrices, you have to have exactly the same dimension. Cool, cool. Okay. And then there's one more thing that we're going to do. We're going to do scalar multiplication, 5a. So I'll scooch this up a little bit. So that is one heck of an ugly five, isn't it? So in other words, five times the matrix that looks like this. And it's really nice because you just multiply everybody by five. That's multiplication. Sorry, it turns out I go really quiet when I'm trying to multiply. I guess multiplying is, is hard. So, 5 times 2, 5 times negative 3, 5 times 0, 5 times 5, 5 times 7, 5 times 1 half. And so all together I get 10, negative 15, 0, 25, 35, and 5 times 1 half is 5 halves. Um, or 2.5 if you prefer. So scalar multiplication, you just multi, it's kind of, here I'm going to go out on a limb and say you should not say this in front of other math teachers, but what the heck, who's really watching this video anyway? I don't know. Um, it's kind of like the distributive property, right? You give everybody a five. So that's how you do addition and scalar multiplication which is pretty cool. Woohoo! Yay! Okay, so there's one other thing I want to talk about. This is going to be very formal, but in fact, the rules are, well, the rules are there to keep you safe. And the nice thing is, is most of the rules are going to, to be the same as what you know. In this video, everything you already know is what you already know. Now, in the next video, when we get to multiplication um, of two matrices, the world goes a little bit sideways. So prepare for that, you know, make sure you've, you build your strength, take your vitamins. But for this one, our properties, and you may not remember back to this, but there were a bunch of properties like associative property and commutative property and distributive property. And it turns out they all hold. So what does that mean? Well, if we're adding two matrices, it doesn't matter what order you ma you add them in, right? Because you're just going to add all of the entries. So easy peasy. Associative property of matrix addition. If you have three matrices and you add two of them together and then the third, or you add the second two together and then add the first, doesn't matter. Get the same answer. Those would be equal answers. The associative property of scalar multiplication. So if you multiply by C, or sorry, by D first and then by C, or if you multiply C times D, the whole thing times A, you're going to end up with the same answer. It does not matter how you multiply by scalars. And also the distributive property. So if you're going to if you're going to take C plus D and multiply that times A you actually end up with C times A plus D times A. And the same thing here, if you take C times the sum of two matrices, you'll get CA plus CB, which is really nice. So yes, you could memorize all of these, or you could just remember that addition, scalar multiplication, all work with the properties you already know. Now, how do we use this? Well, um, the homework will run you through, like, check to see if it's true. You know, some basics. We can also take these properties now and start setting up matrix equations, which this starts to get kind of inception-y because now we studied matrices as a way to look at equations, and now we can put the matrices themselves into equations. So it's like quadruple equations. It's very cool stuff. So I can actually set up an X matrix. 
And um, this is a really cool thing. You'll notice, hopefully you can kind of tell the X is a capital. And it says, for the unknown matrix X. So suddenly there, instead of having just X as a variable, you can have a variable matrix. Generally, the variable matrix, it can be of any size. So it's whatever size it needs to be. Since A and B are two by two matrices, we're gonna be using a two by two unknown matrix. And generally people will just look at it like this. So there will be unknown values. So this matrix is actually a matrix of four unknown values. So we're gonna be solving for them. Now, in general, in general, when you're solving matrix equations, I do not encourage you to plug the matrices into this equation. What I would actually recommend, as you can say in the hint, solve the equation first and then substitute A and B in. It's gonna be so much easier. So, what does that mean? Well, so see how I'm very careful to write a great big a X so that I'm clear these are matrices. So first thing, am I allowed to add A to both sides? I am absolutely allowed to add A to both sides. Does it matter whether I add on the left or the right? And the answer is no, it does not. So I get 2X equals A plus B. Now, what do we have to check? We do have to check, is this possible? Because if it's not, then we're stuck. A is a two by two. B is a two by two. They're the same dimensions. So yes, okay. Next thing, now normally if these were, if this were a regular old equation, what would you do next? Well, if you're solving for X, you divide everybody by two or you multiply by one half, which is gonna be an easier way to look at it. So I'm gonna multiply by one half. This is gonna leave us with the unknown matrix. And this is gonna be one half of the sum of A plus B. And so here I've got a couple options because if I want to multiply a scalar on the outside of a sum, I can take the sum and multiply or I can multiply individually. So we get to choose. I personally am going to add first and then multiply by one half because one half, you know, fraction. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, To solve this, I'm going to find A plus B. So can you guys see it? Yes. So I've got two, three, negative five, one, and four, negative one, one, three. So I've got two plus four, three plus a negative one, negative five plus one, and one plus three. So that's going to be 6, 2, negative 4, 4, right? And then 1 half of A plus B, which is going to be our unknown matrix, is going to be 1 half of this, 6, 2, negative 4, 4. So that's going to give me what? 1 half times 6 is 3. 1 half of 2 is 1, 1 half of negative 4 is negative 2, and 1 half of 4 is 2. And that's my answer. Woohoo! So hopefully this first part of 6.2 feels like a little bit of a break and kind of cool and kind of interesting and new. And um, so I would encourage you to do all the problems that have to do with the addition and the scalar multiplication and solving these equations first. And then when you're ready, go on to the second part of 6.2 because that part really is going to be a little bit different.
multiplying matrices together is a brand new concept and it does take a little bit to get used to what's going on. You kind of have to turn your head sideways to do it. So, but you have finished another video. So that makes you incredibly awesome. Neo thinks so. I think so. You're amazing and incredible and go take a break and pat yourself on the back and congratulate your brain on being so very smart. And then when you're ready, come back and see the next video. Woohoo. Math on.